Uh, Luke chapter 11, for sake of time, we'll, we'll, get to, we'll start reading verse 44. In 44, he's concluding a little uh, discussion with the scribes and the Pharisees. Now, the Pharisees were the rulers, uh, the religious rulers of the day, and the scribes were the ones who were responsible for the Word of God and, and making certain that the law wa was what it was. And uh, these fellows thought that everything the sun set on them, they thought they were better than other people. Uh, they were very uh, uh, legalistic. Uh, if you didn't do it the way they said to do it, then uh, you were worthless. And uh, Miss Billy, the Lord gave us some 690 laws. And then the Pharisees uh, added about another three or 400 that they thought you needed to keep. And uh, they, were, they were just uh, obnoxious, just to be honest with you. And can I, can I say this? I've been around some obnoxious preachers. I mean, fellows that their nose is so high in the air that if they'd been outside today, they'd have drowned. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I don't have any room for obnoxious. I mean, we're not worth the dirt that it take to, you know, the powder it take to blow away. We're not worth the dirt that God took and formed us. Uh, we're nothing outside the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what a blessing to be saved, and what a blessing to know that I'm going to heaven. But that doesn't make me better than somebody else. It just makes me saved. That's all I am. And it's all to the testimony of the glory of Jesus Christ who died for me and saved me. What a blessing. But he's concluding a little discussion he's having with this uh, religious crowd. thought they was better. And this is what he said in verse 44. Woe unto you. That's a very stiff warning. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Uh-oh. Jesus called somebody a hypocrite? I thought he loved everybody. I thought everything was wonderful. I thought he was a little sissy. Huh? Yeah. No, he called them a bunch of... I'm talking about the religious crowd. Uh, outside of, you know, Pilate and Herod, this crowd's what ran Jerusalem. And he calls them hypocrites. He goes on to say, For ye are as graves which appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. Now look at verse 45. Then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, thus saying, thou reproachest us also? And he said, Woe unto you also, ye lawyers. You know, lawyers have never been right with God. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. Uh, he says, For ye laid men with burdens grievous to be born, and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. That kind of sounds like our politicians today. Huh? They tax us to death, but boy, they get away with murder, don't they? Mm. Anyway, I'm going to let that go. He says in verse 47, Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Truly ye bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and ye build their sepulchres. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation, from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple. Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation." What one do you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge? Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in ye hindered. And as he, had, he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things, laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing tonight. Lord, we thank you for those songs. Lord, uh, we don't enjoy the storms, but we grow in the storms, and our faith is increased in the storms. And Lord, we could sit here and say hallelujah for all of eternity for oh what a savior and lord that's what we're representing or what we're celebrating this season what it represents 
Jesus came to be the Savior of the world. And Father, we certainly, for all you've done, you daily loadeth us with benefits. And God, you have been so far much better to us than we have been to you. And Lord, we bless your holy name. Lord, we enjoyed all the good testimonies. Now, Lord, we bless you and praise you for being the great God that you are. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us from the Word of God tonight. I'm excited about being here. I'm excited to see your people. And so, Father, I pray on this cold, rainy, terrible night that, Lord, you would bless your people abundantly for coming out to the house of God. Use this unworthy vessel. Be with those that are sick. Be with those that are providentially hindered. Be with those that, Lord, desire to be here and couldn't. But the Father, these that are here, I pray you'd bless them abundantly. And Father, we'll thank you for what you do. For it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Notice, uh, first of all, in verses 45 to 48, the Lord re brings the reproach on the lawyers. I mean, in verse 45, they ask, do you reproach us? And so he does. And he lets them know that, they made a big thing about building these big sepulchers, these uh, big burial tombs for their fathers, and their fathers are the ones that killed the prophets. And so he reproaches them. He tells them what they are guilty of and their sin. Uh, notice the requiring of the Lord. Uh, verse 49, he says, Therefore also the wisdom of God I will send uh, them prophets and apostles and some of them that shall slay and persecute uh, that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation. Listen, uh, no man lives unto himself and no man dies unto himself. Uh, there are people who are watching us, uh, but there's always consequences for our actions. Uh, for every decision we make, there's a consequence. Uh, and my dear friends, uh, a lot of folks in this day and age think that uh, 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 they get away with everything. There's no consequences. They can live for the day, uh, and there's no uh, 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 repayment for it uh, in the days to come. What cracks me up is uh, 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 all these young ladies getting them, them tattoos on their lower back. They don't realize when they get my age, they'll be on their thighs. They don't understand that. There's consequences for our actions. Uh, and the Lord said uh, that that generation was going to be uh, responsible, it was going to be required of them uh, of all the wickedness their fathers had done. Why? Because this same crowd was going to uh, uh, march him up Calvary's hill uh, and nail him to a cross. Uh, they were going to have to uh, pay for what they had done. Uh, there was the requiring, there's the reproach. Notice the restraining in verse 52. Verse 52 says this. Uh, 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 I done flipped over there. Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in ye hindered. Uh, notice the restraining. You see, the Lord had given Israel his law. And there were folks who was going to believe on the Lord and live for God and do something for God, but the lawyers... Uh, twisted and changed and took the key of knowledge away uh, and hindered them that would have gotten right with God. Uh, much like today, a lot of folks changing the Bible. A lot of folks changing the doctrine. Whatever happened to church being church? When did the church have to start looking like the bar scene, like the disco scene, like the uh, uh, dance halls? Uh, uh, when did the church have to start getting rock musicians uh, and, and preachers had to uh, get up without a necktie and blue jeans looking cool and hip? Uh, listen, uh, 40 years ago I was cool and hip. I ain't cool and hip no more, all right? Uh, 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 but I want to be right with God. I want to do what God said. Uh, when did the church have to start looking like the world, uh, acting like the world, smelling like the world. Uh, listen, if it looks, acts, and smells like the world, it's worldly. Uh, uh, the house of God is supposed to be holy, uh, supposed to be a place of righteousness, uh, supposed to be a place where sinners can come uh, and realize Jesus will change their life and make a new creature out of them. Amen. But yet, we got institutions tonight, I won't call them churches, Mm, that doesn't want folks to change yeah. because they don't offer a change. They offer a little better life. Mm, but see, what they don't offer them is eternal life. Mm. 
most everything they preach is just humanism to deal with how to uh, uh, have a better home, uh, uh, treat your wife right, and treat your husband right. Uh, uh, they deal with uh, uh, self-help, how to feel better about yourself, uh, and they'll offer all kinds of clinics, uh, how to get your diabetes under control, how to get uh, 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 your weight under control, uh, how to eat more healthy. Uh, uh, listen, uh, they got doctors for that. They got dietitians for that. Uh, you know what the church is to be? Uh, a place where you hear the Word of God. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, they deal with uh, how to have your finances in order. That's what Dave Ramsey's for. Uh, 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 hey, uh, uh, you know how to have your finances in order? Uh, read Malachi chapter number 3. Uh, uh, bring the first fruits into the storehouse. Uh, hey, uh, I promise you this. Uh, if you got, uh, are faithful to God uh, and you got to give your money to God like he tells you to, uh, you'll never want for anything. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, you may not have everything you want, uh, uh, but you'll never want for anything. Uh, you'll always have clothes on your back. Uh, Always have food on your table. Uh, always have shoes on your feet. Uh, always have a roof over your head. Uh, why? Because God is faithful, my dear friends. Uh, that's how you get some money help from the Bible. And they give counseling at these places. Mm. You know the best counseling you ever get is the Word of God. Mm. Perfect peace have they whose mind is stayed upon the Lord. That's pretty good counseling right there. Mm, but you see, uh, uh, they, they're, de they're dealing with people's issues, but they're not dealing with people's sin. Amen. My dear friends, a lot of your issues will be solved when you get your sins washed away. Yes, sir. Now listen, I've seen people run and shed big tears and, and cry at an altar so, uh, 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 and come forward and, and act like they get saved or say they get saved so God will put their marriage back together. God's not interested in your marriage. He's interested in your soul. And if you get your soul uh, cleansed and your, your spouse gets their soul cleansed, God will change your marriage. Might even change your marriage if one of you gets saved. But that's not His purpose. His purpose is for you to get saved. And God doesn't straighten out their marriage. You can't find them in church anymore. Mm -mm. Uh, so were they really interested in God saving them from their sin? No. Uh, they was interested in a little quick fix. And I've seen it about all kinds of stuff. Boy, if I just go forward, maybe I, I, I my drug problem be over. Well, your drug problem be over. You give your heart to Jesus, and you, and you get in the Bible, and you start putting Jesus first. Uh, he'll change your appetite for things. Uh, 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 you'll get addicted to him instead of uh, the things of this world. Uh, uh, but listen, if you just come forward uh, 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 so you don't have to go face a judge or so you get a, a commuted sentence or so uh, uh, you get in the good graces of your family and it's not about you dealing with your sin and dealing with the Lord, you're not going to get any help. I've seen it all, but I've seen folks convicted of their sin realize they're lost, realize Jesus will save them, and come give their heart and life to Jesus. And he not only saves them, he changes their life because that's what he does. Uh, and thank the Lord for that. But all these places out here call themselves churches. Mm, they all have the same philosophy. And this is nowhere in my no notes. Their philosophy is... Well, we got to change to get the young people. Well, we haven't changed. we got some good young people. I'd like to have a whole lot more. But I'm satisfied that God's given us some. You know what to get the young people? The same thing got me when I was young. Preaching of the Bible. Uh, because God chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. He didn't choose uh, 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 screens and smoke and rock bands and all that junk. He didn't, and he didn't uh, 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 choose. Uh, they're doing away with pulpits. I like the pulpit because you can't see how fat I am. You know why it's called a pulpit? Because standing behind the sacred desk of God, many of people have been pulled from the pits of hell here in the preaching of the Word of God. You know why they're doing away from them? Because they're not pulling anybody out of hell. Wow. You're welcome. Didn't cost you anything. You got preachers being like comedians, got a little stool and handheld mic. 
Huh? You know? Huh? I'm not Kevin Hart. Huh? You got all these people trying to act. They're trying to make people feel more comfortable. Listen, people that are lost ought to feel welcome, but they ought to never feel comfortable in their sin. Hmm? The Holy Ghost ought to disturb them about their sin. Hmm? Ah, that's enough of that. Notice the revilement, verse 53. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things, laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. Uh, they were just absolutely in a tizzy because he done called them out and they were looking for something that they might accuse him so they could stone him. That's what they was wanting to do. But of course, they didn't realize they were only standing in front of God. He already knew their thoughts and their hearts. Hmm? Uh, the very one who created us and created everything, including speech, you think he's going to give them something? It wasn't his time yet. Hmm? And can I say, but notice they were so upset and so reviled. Can I say that I have seen some of the most hateful people in this world in church? When you preach on somebody's sin and it gets too close to the quick, and they don't like it, they'll be quick to tell you on the way out. I'll never forget, I hadn't been preaching long, probably on about my second or third message. I believe my Aunt Lynn might have been there. I don't remember. Uh, but I, I just I just preached what God ha gave me. I preached on when he come back in, you know, in his glory, and we was with him on them white horses when he comes back to land on the Mount of, Arm uh, Mount of Olives and at the Battle of Armageddon. You've all heard me preach along those lines. I preached that day he'd, be you know, he'd get the glory from man. That day he'd gain the respect of man. They're calling for the rocks to fall on them. Uh, I said, when's he going to get glory from the church? I just kind of preached. I just didn't have any sense. I didn't even have an outline back in those days. I, didn't, I just preached, Luke. I just, you know, pulled the Band-Aid off. That's what I did. <laughs> when that service was over, there was a bunch of buzzards flocked around me and accused me and chewed me out. Because who was I? Just the preacher's grandson, some little hothead, little smart, uh, smart, uh, smart mouth. Who was I to tell them? They'd been in that church 40 and 50 years. They was there for my granddaddy was there. And they was this, they was that. And, they, and I'll be honest with you, Brother Clint, I know what Stephen felt like. Mm -hmm. All I felt was grace and love from the Father. I couldn't even hear what they saying, Brother Ray. Because that guy back then, he would have punched him in the mouth. I know that guy. But I didn't even hear any of that. Just grace, glory, and truth. You say, why'd they get so mad? Because pulled the band-aid off. Hmm? Huh? People hug your neck when you're preaching on heaven. But you get to preaching on their sin, you'll see what they're really made of. You know what I love about Brother Bob? There's a lot of things I love about Brother Bob. But you know what I, I, I love about Brother Bob? Brother Bob, when I preach a hard message, I mean a hard one, he'll come up, that's the only time he comes up and hugs my neck after. He does. And he'll say, thank you for preaching the truth to us. He said, I don't hug your neck when you preach a good message because I don't want you to think I'm buttering up, but thank you for preaching the message, don't you? He does that. Yeah. He comes up and says, thanks, thank, thanks for preaching a hard message. I can't say that about everybody, Brother Clint. A lot of people, they don't even want to shake my hand on the way out on them hard messages, huh? Uh, most of them's named Mary. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> just getting you ready for Sunday, Mary. That's all I'm doing, all right? <laughs> I'm interested in verse 51. That's why I said all that stuff. There's nothing really what I want to preach on. Look at verse 51. From the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple, verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Now the Lord has just told them that God said that they would kill the prophets and the apostles. And he begins to name from Abel to Zechariah. And he says this about Zechariah. He said, 
which perished between the altar and the temple. In 2 Chronicles chapter 24, verse 20, the Bible says, And the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest. Now, Jehoiada doesn't mean anything to you, but it means a whole lot to me. He's, he's one of them fellows in the Bible that really means something to me. His name means God knows. But what really means something to me is not his boy, Zechariah, his other boy. His other boy is one of my greatest heroes in the Bible. As a matter of fact, we almost named Jordan after him. But I didn't want to give Jordan a hill, uh, Hebrew name. A hillbilly with Hebrew name, that don't work too well. He got beat up at school. So I didn't name His son was Benaiah, who was one of David's mighty men of valor. Benaiah is one that fought through the Philistines all night to get David a cup of water out of the well of Bethlehem because David won a cup of I mean, Benaiah is the one that uh, uh, slew two lion-like men of Moab, uh, and Benaiah is the one that uh, slew, a pit in a, uh, slew a lion in a pit on a snowy day. Uh, Benaiah was a man is what I'm trying to say, uh, and uh, that's his boy's dad. So when I, I read this and read his Jehoiah's boy, uh, uh, Benaiah, Benaiah's brother Zechariah, boy, these men who killed Zechariah were brave men with Benaiah somewhere in the, in, in the, in the shadows. Uh, but it goes on to say that Jehoiah the priest which stood above the people and said unto him, this is what got Zechariah stoned. Thus saith God, why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord that ye cannot prosper? Because you have forsaken the Lord, he hath also forsaken you. And they conspired against him and stoned him with stones uh, at the commandment of the king in the court uh, of the house of the Lord. Uh, now, uh, 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 the Lord, he died in the court of the house of the Lord, just outside the temple. Uh, 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 the Lord tells us in Luke 50, uh, 11, 51, uh, that he died between the altar and... Uh, and the temple. Uh, now let me paint the picture for you. Uh, 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 we have the altar at the front by uh, uh, where the pulpit is. Uh, 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 but in the, under the law, uh, they had uh, uh, the outer court, which was outside, and they had the brazen altar. Uh, and that's where they'd bring the animals to sacrifice. Uh, and the high priest uh, would slay the animal, uh, drain its blood from it, uh, and he'd uh, uh, flay the animal and put it on the altar and let it be consumed on the altar. Uh, and then uh, 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 he would take the blood of the lamb and have to go into the holy place, the temple. Uh, now here's the man of God uh, who stands up uh, and he preaches to them because they'd forsaken God. Uh, God had forsaken them. Uh, they didn't like it and they stoned him. Uh, between the place of sacrifice uh, and the holy place. Uh, now think about that. Uh, he died between the altar, uh, the place of sacrifice, uh, and the holy place. Uh, I, I don't know about you, uh, but I got to thinking about that. Uh, the place of sacrifice is where something dies, uh, where blood is being atoning for. Uh, and I got to thinking about uh, uh, the place of sacrifice was Calvary. Uh, and you and I, uh, when we got born again, it's because we went to Calvary. Uh, hey, uh, and there's the holy place, uh, uh, the place uh, uh, that uh, uh, we mature in our Christian faith uh, to where we get to where we start resembling Jesus, uh, start sounding like Jesus. Uh, that ought to be the place we're all aspiring to be. Uh, uh, we ought to want to be more like Jesus every day. Uh, and here he's stoned. Uh, he dies between the, uh, uh, the altar uh, and the temple. Uh, and I got to thinking about this. Uh, I want to preach on uh, what a way to die. Uh, hey, uh, I want to die in the work of God. I want to die uh, uh, not uh, where Jesus found me at the place of sacrifice, uh, but I want to die uh, uh, at that holy place uh, where I'm looking more like him uh, and I'm uh, acting more like him uh, where people see a difference. Uh, what a way to go. Uh, listen, uh, I got to thinking, let me die preaching and the truth. Hallelujah. I don't want to die a has-been. I don't want to die a castaway. I want to die. And people say, that was a man of God. He died preaching the truth. He died standing for the truth. He didn't back up or shut up when it came to the truth. Hey, he believed the Bible and he proclaimed the Bible. Let me die preaching the truth. Hey, I got to think that. Let me die praising the Lord. We've done a little bit of that tonight around here. 
He's worthy of our praise. Uh, I don't want to go out complaining about the Lord. Uh, I don't want to go out talking bad about his church. Uh, I don't want to go out talking about the life that I've lived. Uh, hey, God's been good to me. Uh, everything I have came from the hand of God. Uh, God's blessed me. Uh, hey, uh, he saved me, uh, changed my life, uh, put me in the church. Uh, called me to the ministry, uh, allows me to have some of the greatest church family and friends I uh, would ever know. Uh, hey, God's been good to me. Uh, he's walked every mile with me. Uh, he's met every need. Uh, every time when I thought there was no way, he made a way. Uh, hey, let me die praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I got to thinking about this. Uh, let me die pointing sinners to Jesus. Uh, let me die Let them know. Uh, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, there's no other way uh, to the Father but by Him. Uh, let me uh, die pointing sinners, uh, letting them know you must be born again. Uh, uh, the only way to heaven is through the Lord Jesus. Uh, let me die Let them know Jesus saves. Uh, Jesus saves. Uh, Jesus saves. Uh, hey, what a way to go. Uh, listen, let me die uh, uh, praying in the Holy Ghost. Uh, Hey, let me check out of here, uh, uh, getting in touch with heaven uh, and really having a power of God in my life while I'm praying. Let me die that way. Uh, listen, I uh, well, got a book one time. That's before we had Jordan. I know that because what became his nursery at one time was, was my office at the house. And I got this book called Praying Hyde. And Praying Hyde was a missionary to India back in the 1800s. And Praying Hyde wanted to win somebody to God every day. And if he didn't win somebody to God today, that means he had to win two people to God tomorrow. But he was most known for, even though he, he turned parts of India upside down back then for the gospel's sake, what he was most known for was his praying life. And he prayed so much, and he prayed in unction of the power of the Holy Ghost so much, and he prayed so long, prayed so hard, that his heart actually started dislodging from its place and moving in his chest. He went to the doctor, uh, and the doctor said, uh, 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 you got to quit praying the way you pray. It's going to kill you. He just kept praying. When he died, they went and had a little room out back, and they went, Brother Clint looked in that room out back, and there were two holes worn out in the wooden floor where his knees were from praying. I was reading that book, and Miss Annette walked by. She said, what is wrong with you? I said, that book's wrong with me. I said, I realized I had never prayed after reading about a man like that. Lord, let me die praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Not my, now I lay me down to sleep type of prayer, but one where I got a hold of the horns of the altar and God's got a hold of me. Mm. Whoa, what a way to go. Mm. Got to thinking about this. Let me pray, let me die with the power of God on me. Huh? In this day and age, few even know what the power of God looks like. Let me die with the power of God on me. Let me die where others say he had God on him. No doubt you read about Stephen. They're chucking stones off of him, and he's praying that the Lord don't lay it to their charge. Whoa, he had the power of God on him. I don't believe he fell to, fell to stone. I believe he fell asleep and woke up in glory. Hallelujah. Let me die proving my convictions. Hmm. Listen, I know guys used to preach on things in the 70s. I know guys used to preach can't have a television set. They're wicked. And today they got four of them. Huh? I don't have anything against TVs. Here's what I used to tell them back then. Mine's got an on and off switch. Man, I remember going to camp meetings and they'd, they'd brag how they took them out back and shot them with a 357. I thought, boy, that's a waste of a bullet. Why didn't they donate it? 
Uh, but listen, I've read the Bible. There's blessing and cursing and everything. There are things on the TV that's wicked. About everything on TV nowadays is wicked. Unless you get the cartoon channel with Looney Tunes, huh? But listen, that's what an on and off switch is for. That's what a mute button's for, huh? Uh, but but I've, I've, I've seen these guys have preached against all this stuff, and now they got it all. And they hate me. Because, Brother Donald, I just got this streak about it. I go, well, when did God change his mind about that? I thought he was saying yesterday, today, and forever. And if God was to get your TV in the 70s, you got one, when you got, well, I've heard him say, well, I use it for educational purposes. Are you lying? He ain't using it for educational purposes. There ain't anything educational on it. Uh, no. Let me die proving my convictions. Hmm. I'm fortunate I had a pastor my granddaddy told me he said you find you a preacher and you stick on his coattails you keep your mouth shut and you'll learn more from him than you ever learned in school and my granddaddy was right because most of it I learned in Bible college you don't use it at all but my pastor taught me something very important he said don't have any hobby horses that you can't prove by the Bible hmm uh -uh. I got hobby horses. You ought to pray. You ought to be faithful. You ought to put God first. You ought to seek the Lord. You ought to live right, walk right, spit right. I got those hobby horses because I can back them up by the Bible. But I don't have them goofy hobby horses where a preacher's got to wear a white short shirt and where you can't wear wire rim glasses and where you, you know, all that's junk. Let me die proving my convictions that how I started is how I finished. Hmm? Uh, then I thought about this. Let me die. I'm talking about what a way to die. Let me die prohibiting the devil. I want to get in his way. Now, I'll never make his top ten most wanted list, but I sure would like to stub his toe every now and then, wouldn't you? Uh I sure would like to be one that gets in the way of him causing somebody else some harm. Uh, uh, let me die prohibiting the devil. Now listen. We don't have a choice in how we're going to die. I imagine every one of us would say, boy, I don't want to die with a bunch of machines hooked up to me, and me lay there forever, and somebody have to take care of me. We don't sign up for that. Thank God there are people who really do take care of folks in those kind of conditions. And thank God you can die even in a dignified way in those kind of conditions. But I don't want to die that way. Uh, there are certain ways we don't want to die. I don't want to die being burnt up in a in a fire. That sounds like a miserable way to die. They say the smoke kills you before the fire. I don't know. And I've never anybody walked out of there and said, no, it wasn't the smoke. I just should not find out. Huh? I don't want to die that way. Uh, you know, I, I said one time I didn't want to die drowning. I thought that'd be terrible being out somewhere in the middle of the ocean and you know, can't keep swimming, and you go down, and some shark, I mean, I would, that some shark come by and eat me, and Phil said, or a dinosaur, I ain't figured that out yet, you know, about dinosaurs in the ocean, but I'll figure that out one of these days, huh? But really, I think drowning would be a terrible death. Not being able to breathe, taking in that fluid, I think that'd be a terrible death. But we don't have any choice in how we're going to die. We don't know when we're going to die. Today might be our last day. We don't know that. We don't have any choice. But we do get to choose to die daily. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 31, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Now, the Apostle Paul, outside of the Lord Jesus and John the Baptist, because Jesus said John the Baptist was the greatest man um, um, that ever walked the face here, you know, greatest man born among women. 
But the Apostle Paul's got to be right up there pretty close. I mean, he wrote most of the New Testament, at least half of it. Planted churches all over the known world. Was persecuted in ways we can't even fathom and kept on keeping on for Jesus. And the Apostle Paul said he had to die daily. He had to die to self. Our egos can get away sometimes. And sometimes we can have pity parties. I imagine Paul felt like having one every now and then. He had to die out to that every day. Because he realized God's grace was sufficient. He had to die out to Satan. Because I imagine Satan used to taunt him. Had to die out to that every day. Uh, had to die out to sin every day. Paul didn't walk on water. He still faced things. He had to die out to those every single day. He chose to. You know why he was great? Because he came little in his own eyes. He learned what John the Baptist said. John the Baptist said, I must decrease, he must increase. Talk about the Lord. Well, the Apostle Paul constantly abased himself by dying daily. Now, I, I read this quote today. I thought it was great. It said, When we are willing to die to all that is around us, then we can live for the one who is above us. Yeah, I'll read that again. When we are willing to die to all that is around us, then we can live for the one who is above us. Now, the Lord gave me this yesterday. If we don't die privately, we won't die publicly. Not the way we's preaching tonight. My dear friends, when folks see us, they don't need to see us. They need to see the one we represent. And that happens when we die daily. You want to die in a blaze of glory? That starts by dying privately, every day. Dying and asking God to have his way in our lives. And when we do, he just might let us go out in a blaze of glory. But keep in mind, much like Brother Donald's song, all those in the Bible that died in glory died in extreme circumstances. My dear friends, you want to go out bringing glory to God? It starts by dying privately. What a way to die. I want to die every day that Jesus might live in me, that my others might see him in me. The only way you ever amount to anything for him is when you amount to nothing for you. And that happens when you die daily. I wonder what a way to die are you willing to die well I've heard a lot of people say boy if I'd been there I'd been willing to die for the Lord well he don't want us to die for him that way he wants us to live for him and we live for him by dying daily will you die for the Lord let's all stand brother Clint get a song of invitation God spoke to your heart tonight the altar's open Maybe somebody's been a blessing. You want to go let them know? Maybe somebody's been an encouragement. You ought to go let them know. Maybe the Lord wants you to be an encouragement to somebody. You just mind the Lord during this invitation. But let the Lord have his way. And that starts with us dying. I remember what Greg Phillips says. If it embarrasses us, it probably pleases the Lord. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for those hard-to-understand things or those things that are not appealing to our flesh. Lord, but you included them in the Bible to show us the ways of God. Now, Father, help us to die out to self, sin, and Satan every day that we might live unto Christ. Now, Father, Paul said he was crucified with you. Nevertheless, he lived. God, help us to be crucified that we might live unto Christ. Bless now in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Help folks.
We'll bless you and praise you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.